viewers in the last class we saw that uh, what are the various terminology related to machine foundations and then we saw that how you can analyze a linear spring soil system then we saw what exactly do we mean by uh, free vibration force vibration and how the analysis can be carried out with and without damping we saw in the last class also that uh, there were three, three type of foundation one was block then box and then wall foundation so uh, within the scope of your course uh, we have this block foundation so let us try to see that how you can analyze this uh, block foundation what exactly are the uh, methodologies adopted for this analysis so the, we will discuss now the method of analysis of a block foundation. Basically there are two methods uh, for the analysis of uh, this machine foundation. First one is method based on linear elastic weightless spring that you have already seen that how you can represent the system by spring and mass system. Then method based on linear theory of elasticity that is elastic half space. So first let us try to see that how this method based on linear elastic weightless spring works. In this method the soil is replaced by elastic springs. See anything that if you want to have its response you have to convert into some mathematical form so that you can get, get its response. So in that case as such soil you cannot uh, it is natural occurring soil. Uh, natural occurring material so we really need to replace it uh, such that uh, we can convert this natural occurring soil to some kind of model so for modeling the soil the elastic springs are used equation for natural frequencies can be written and compared with operating frequency you have already seen that uh, when we were discussing about uh, this uh, soil uh, this spring mass system in that one you have seen that uh, how you can get the equation for natural frequency and how you can compare that with uh, operating frequency uh, using that frequency ratio r which was the ratio of uh, operating frequency of machine and the natural frequency and the standard curves with respect to that is frequency ratio versus magnification factor have been given for zero damping as well as uh, with damping. So from there we can get this natural frequencies. To avoid resonance the frequency ratio should be either less than 0.5 or greater than 1.5. We have seen that exactly the resonance condition occurs at exactly frequency ratio to be equal to 1. However, in the vicinity of R is equal to 1 also the uh, amplitude values are quite high. So that is why to avoid any kind of resonance the frequency ratio is kept in the range of 0.5 and 1.5. The influence of damping can be introduced in the solution of equations that we have already seen that how it has been uh, introduced. That effect of damping on amplitude computed at operating frequency is small as compared to that as resonance. As I showed you the earlier figure in that one we have seen that at resonance the amplitude is quite high while at operating speed that is when the frequency ratio are quite high then the amplitude or the magnification factor was not that much it was very small so the amplitude is not that much at operating speed. The method is simple though a proper evaluation of soil constants is rather difficult since you are replacing the soil by equivalent spring. So you need to know that what exactly is the characteristic of that particular soil so that the modeling can be done properly and to evaluate these soil constant it is quite difficult. We have different measures so let us try to see that what are the different soil constants and how we can uh, obtain them. So first soil spring constants, a uh, spring constant is defined as a force causing a unit deformation. So wherever I am using that spring constant you this picture should come into your mind that it is the force which will cause unit deformation. 
For the analysis of a block foundation, one of the approaches is to consider the soil as weightless elastic springs. So, uh, this since we are talking of the analysis of block foundation, so the soil is being modeled as weightless elastic springs that a series of springs will be there. When the block foundation undergoes vertical oscillation, the compression is induced at the base of the spring, uh, sorry footing. You have seen that the block foundation it rests on the soil and in case you are representing the soil by a set of springs, whenever this block foundation will be subjected to the load, it will be, uh, uh, I mean that machine foundation is there. So, it will be subjected to a static as well as dynamic load with result of that it will undergo some oscillation and so with the consequence of this oscillation, this compression will be induced at the base of the footing. On the contrary, if the block undergoes translation about x or y axis, shear stresses are induced at the base of the foundation block. So, you see either uh, the, the translation will be there in x or y direction. So, you see here I am considering z direction as the vertical direction. However, x and y directions are in horizontal planes. So, in case the force because it is dynamic load, it can be vertical, it can be horizontal from any direction it can come. So, if due to the presence of dynamic load, this block if it is undergoing the translation that is if the movement is taking place along x or y direction or the movement is taking place in horizontal plane, then the shear stresses will be induced as compared to the compression which was there when it was subjected to the vertical load. Okay? So, two type of things are there. In one case the compression at the base of the footing was induced and in another case in case when the block is undergoing translation about x and y axis the shear stresses are induced at the base of the foundation block. The nature of equivalent spring stiffness will be different in each of the different modes of vibration. Obviously, when it is subjected to compression at the base of the footing, the property of the soil or the equivalent spring with which you have replaced the soil, it will be different and in case the translation is taking place, then in that case the spring constant will be different. So, as x and y axes are interchangeable, there are basically four different types of equivalent soil spring constant which are of interest for the purpose of analysis. So, you see the number of mode of vibration, different number of mode of vibration, different will be the equivalent stiffness of the equivalent spring by which you are representing the soil. So, whatever is the mode of the vibration, one corresponding value of spring constant of the soil will be there. If it is compression, that spring constant will be different. If it is translation along x or y axis, it will be different. So, corresponding to the various mode of uh, um, vibration, four different type of equivalent soil spring constants are there. Let us try to see one by one that what exactly are they, what is the physical meaning, physical interpretation of them, how you can determine them using different techniques. So, the first one is coefficient of elastic uniform compression, second is coefficient of elastic uniform shear, third is coefficient of elastic non-uniform shear and the fourth is coefficient of elastic non-uniform compression. So, these are basically four types of equivalent soil spring constants. First, let us see that coefficient of elastic uniform compression. We represent it as C subscript U that is C U. How we define it as that it is the ratio of external uniform pressure to the elastic part of the settlement. Wherever we talk in terms of spring constant you know that it is the force required to cause unit deformation. 
so that is what is there this is also kind of a spring constant so it is the ratio of external uniform pressure to elastic part of the settlement so when you divide it that means that you are talking that force per unit deformation so what is this force in this case it is the external uniform pressure and what is it that settlement is the elastic part of the settlement as we were discussing in case when we were discussing that pile foundation then we we have discussed that what is the elastic and plastic settlement so in this case also you will have elastic settlement as well as the plastic settlement so in case of elastic uniform compression coefficient you it is the ratio of external uniform pressure to the elastic part of the settlement then second one is coefficient of elastic uniform shear we represent it as c tau tau is in subscript and it is defined as that it is the ratio of average shear stress at the foundation contact area to the elastic part of displacement in sliding see it is not compressing right now so it is the translation which is taking place either in x or y direction or x along x or y axis so wherever there is translation we have seen that there will be development of shear stress at the base of the footing so in that case if it is subjected to the translation along x or y axis in that case this uh, equivalent soil spring stiffness is defined as coefficient of elastic uniform shear where it is the ratio of the average shear stress which is generated at foundation contact area to the elastic part of the displacement in sliding in our case it was elastic part of the settlement that was a vertical compression however in this case it is the displacement in sliding third one is coefficient of elastic non uniform shear we represent it as c psi it is the ratio of external moment applied to the vertical axis to the product of polar moment of inertia of contact area of base of foundation and angle of rotation of the foundation you see if the vertical uh, x and y axis are horizontal axis and z axis is the vertical axis if the external moment which is applied to the vertical axis then in that case what will happen you have the block of, uh, area of the block foundation so you can get the polar moment of inertia of the same and then you take the ratio of that polar moment of the inertia to the angle of rotation of the foundation you you see that i told you that spring constant is the force to cause unit deformation or deflection when the force is causing the deflection that is in case of compression you you have seen that it is it will be the vertical compression in case of the translation it will be the displacement in sliding however if any body uh, any system or any body is subjected to a moment there will not be any translation there will be rotational movement so that is what is happening here that it is subjected to external moment and so the resulting deformation will not be the translation but the rotational one so that angle of rotation of the foundation so you have while you find out the uh, uh, spring constant equivalent spring constant then you have to take the ratio of external moment which you are applying to the vertical stress to the product of polar moment of inertia of contact area of the base of foundation and the ratio with angle of rotation of the foundation then coefficient of elastic non uniform compression this is represented by c phi phi is in subscript it is the ratio of external moment about a horizontal axis c in the third case it was about vertical axis to the product of moment of inertia of contact area of base of the foundation about the same axis and the corresponding angle of rotation of the foundation uniform pressure to the elastic part of the settlement as it was there in case of uh, 
this uh, uh, non uniform uh, shear exactly in this case uh, also it is subjected to external moment but about horizontal axis so you have to take the ratio as per this particular definition to determine to obtain the coefficient of elastic non uniform compression now how you can determine these uh, spring constants let us try to see that that how we can determine this equivalent soil spring constants so the soil spring constant can be estimated from several in situ and lab tests in situ tests they are conducted in field however lab tests obviously as name suggests they are conducted in laboratory so in situ tests are preferred because they represent the real situation which is exactly existing in the field and which will be the they will be represented uh, representing the exact condition that the foundation or the soil foundation system will be subjected to this is code uh, that indian standard code of practice is there and its uh, number is 5249 that is is 5249 1992 provides the details of tests for the determination of dynamic properties of soil what are these tests these tests are cyclic plate load test then block vibration test free vibration test and wave propagation test let us try to see that what exactly are these tests how they are conducted what are the different guidelines given in is code and how you can analyze the test data to obtain or to estimate this equivalent soil spring constants so first we discuss about the cyclic plate load test in this test the magnitude of load is maintained constant till the settlement of the test plate is completed as you see as the name suggests that it is cyclic and since the dynamic loads are coming into picture obviously you have to go for cyclic kind of loading so this is a in situ test conducted in the field a plate is there a foundation uh, a representative plate is there so wherever you have to conduct that particular test you have to put the arrangement at that particular depth and then the loading arrangement is made in such a manner that loading as well as unloading can take place so whenever you apply a load you uh, obviously on the application of that load the soil beneath that plate will be Uh, deflecting or the some settlement will be taking place so you have to give sufficient time that that particular settlement has been stabilized it is not further settling so for that purpose the magnitude of the load is to be maintained constant till the settlement of the test plate is complete that means that the whenever the further settlement of the test plate is not occurring then only you can increase or decrease the load in in case of loading or in case of unloading respectively but till the point the test plate is settling you have to maintain the load on the test plate the load is then released to zero and the plate allowed to rebound so first is once you have to load it to some particular load then you have to unload it so after loading let us say for the first cycle after loading you have to maintain that load till the test plate is stop settling then from that particular point of time you have to go on withdrawing the load from the test plate that means that you have to unload the test plate so in that particular process you will be removing the load in some steps so in that case the load will be released to zero and obviously due to the elastic uh, uh, sum of the elasticity which is present in the soil the test plate will have the tendency to rebound although the settlement which is, which has already occurred the resulting settlement will not be zero that is it will not be recovering whole of the settlement but some part of the settlement it will be recovering and that part of the settlement is called as elastic settlement so then 
when this test place is uh, allowed to rebound you can note down that uh, once this rebound is stopped you can no note down that particular reading of the test plate that is that particular settlement so that is there that the reading of final settlement is taken the load is then increased to next higher magnitude of loading and maintained constant till the settlement is complete which again is recorded so once you have loaded and then you unload it to zero then further loading takes place and exactly in the similar manner as you did for the first loading cycle you have to do for the second loading cycle that whatever is the maximum loading intensity on the test plate corresponding to that obviously the plate is going to settle so you have to maintain that much loading intensity till the time test plate stops settling so till the point it is settling down you have to maintain that particular load and wherever that settlement stops you have to note down that reading then the load is then further reduced to zero and the settlement reading is taken as it was done in case of first unloading cycle from the second loading cycle you go on withdrawing the load such that the load on the test plate becomes zero and in this process you must allow the test plate to rebound because whatever is the elastic settlement or due to elastic nature it it will have the tendency to rebound or to recover some of the settlement so that particular settlement reading is also to be taken and then further the next increment of the load is applied again this procedure is repeated the cycles of loading unloading and reloading are continued till the required final load is reached so you see either the final load is reached this is code has given the provision that what should be this final load till the plate fails you can see you 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 will be having one particular condition in some loading cycle that the plate will not be taking any further load or the failure will be represented by excessive settlement of the plate so there till that particular level till the failure of the uh, soil which is around the plate you have to go on loading unloading and then reloading again from the load settlement data a graph is plotted between load intensity p and elastic settlement s e you see whenever we were allowing the plate to rebound to what extent it has rebound we have noted down that final settlement so from there we can get the elastic settlement because whatever it has recovered that is a part of the settlement which is elastic remaining is plastic settlement so the elastic settlement we can get corresponding to each loading intensity the slope of the load intensity settlement data is the coefficient of elastic uniform compression so from the load settlement data directly you will be getting this uh, load intensity p versus elastic settlement and the slope of this particular curve will give you the coefficient of elastic uniform compression so you you uh, i hope that now you understood that how you can get the coefficient of elastic uniform compression using cyclic plate load test data so here you see that cu was the coefficient which we are intend to find out is equal to p by se where p is the load intensity in kilonewton per meter square or kg force per centimeter square se is elastic rebound corresponding to p in meter or centimeter then your uh, unit of cu will be uh, kilonewton per meter cube or kg force per centimeter cube you have to be consistent as far as uh, the units are concerned if you are using this si units uh, kilonewton per meter square and meter you should use or in case of cgs you have to use this kg force uh, per centimeter square and centimeter for elastic rebound now this was all about the cyclic plate load test so cyclic plate load test gives us the coefficient of uh, um, compression 
uh, that is elastic uniform compression that is CU. Now let us try to see that how this block vibration test is conducted. You remember that we talked of four tests first was cyclic plate load test and the second is vi block vibration test. In this test a concrete block of size 1.5 meter, 0.75 meter and 0.7 meter which is the height of the block is cast in a pit at a proposed depth of foundation. So wherever you are planning to place the foundation at that particular depth you can create a pit till that particular depth and there on that particular depth the concrete block which is uh, of this these dimension is casted. Then foundation bolts for fixing oscillator and motor assembly are embedded in the concrete block at the time of casting the block. So while you cast the block the bolts uh, because you know that oscillator and the motor they will be uh, performing there because it is machine foundation. So you have to fix the bolt uh, while you are constructing that particular block so that subsequently you can fix oscillator and motor to this concrete block. The motor and oscillator assembly is mounted on the block. So we, we have the fixing arrangement, we have the bolts for that. So you, with the help of those bolts, the motor and the oscillator, they are fixed on the block. You can see here that it is the test pit this is the figure which has been taken from uh, IS 5249 1992. So uh, this IS code if it is available to you, you can directly get uh, this particular figure from that uh, IS code. So this is uh, this shows the setup for block vibration test as I told you that it is to be conducted in a test pit. You see this is the test pit that is at this particular depth from the ground surface you are planning to place the foundation for that particular machine. And here you see a CC block that is concrete block has been casted here and on top of that this assembly of oscillator and motor has been mounted. However, these are to take uh, the readings for this block vibration test that we will see right now. Then this is the block diagram for testing equipment for a uh, block vibration test. This is again has been taken from 5249-1992 that is IS code. Uh, it is this concrete block. So you can have a look that uh, how it looks from the top. So this is the concrete block on top of that this is the motor and oscillator which has been mounted. Here is the amplifier. Here is the power supply. This is a speed controller unit. So and here it is transducer to take the reading. How it is done that there are two types of tests that is one is vertical vibration test another is horizontal vibration test. So what exactly these tests are and what are their salient features we will see one by one that first let us see that vertical vibration test. The mechanical oscillator is mounted on the block such that it generates purely vertical sinusoidal vibrations and the line of action of vibratory force passes through the CG of the block that is center of gravity of the block. As the name of the test suggests that it is vertical vibration test. So the mechanical oscillator which has been mounted on the concrete block it is mounted in such a manner that it generates the oscillation in vertical direction that is vertical sinusoidal vibration and its line of action that is it will be creating the external force which will be acting on that particular block. So you see as the name suggests that is vertical vibration test the mechanical oscillator is mounted on the block such that it generates purely vertical sinusoidal vibration. So in case of vertical vibration test which uh, the whatever is the oscillation which is getting generated that has to be essentially vertical sinusoidal vibration and the line of action of vibratory force passes through the center of gravity of the block. So the uh, whatever is, 
is this uh, mechanical oscillator which has been mounted we have to make sure with the help of these uh, calibrated transducers that it is generating purely vertical sinusoidal vibration and this particular line of action of this uh, external force must coincide with the uh, center of gravity of the concrete uh, block on which this oscillator has been mounted. Then two acceleration pickups duly calibrated are mounted on the block such that they sense vertical motion of the block. So to uh, note down or to uh, have the knowledge that what exactly is the vertical motion of the block, how it is taking place this acceleration pickups are also mounted on the block. Choosing a suitable value of angle of setting of eccentric masses, the oscillator is made to run at a constant frequency. So little uh, this thing uh, eccentricity of the masses is there. So for that particular value of angle of setting of eccentricity masses, the oscillator has to run at a constant frequency for one particular eccentricity it uh, the frequency of the oscillator should not be different the signals of acceleration pickups are recorded through amplifiers and pen recorded or any other suitable recording indicating devices so the signals of acceleration then after that it is being converted that is First the test is conducted whatever is the data that you collect and then you have to analyze. So for that the signal of the acceleration pickups are recorded through amplifiers or pen recorded or any other suitable device. So how they are uh, uh, being analyzed afterwards we will see here. The frequency of the oscillator is then increased and the process is repeated. So you see first for one constant frequency the experiment was conducted and then this frequency was increased and the whole experiment was repeated again. So the same process is continued for other eccentricity setting. So you pick different different uh, eccentricity setting and choose a particular constant frequency throughout that and then you can go on conducting the test and go on recording the response of acceleration pickups. In a forced vertical vibration test, the amplitude of vibration that is AZ at a given frequency FZ is given by AZ is equal to small AZ divided by 4 pi square FZ where this AZ is acceleration in the vertical direction. You see you were recording the response of acceleration pickups. That is how you will be able to get this acceleration in the vertical direction. Then amplitude, then once you know this AZ, you can get this amplitude. How? Amplitude versus frequency curve is then plotted for each eccentricity value to obtain the natural frequency of soil block system. We will see with the help of one figure that how it is obtained. But from this particular expression, once this AZ is known and at a given frequency, so this is also given. So this you are measuring from the response of acceleration pickups. So once this and this they are known, AZ can be known and then this amplitude AZ versus frequency, frequency is known is can be plotted for corresponding eccentricity values. So the coefficient of elastic uniform compression using this vertical vibration test can be obtained as 4 pi square f nz square m by a. Now you see here that you have plotted amplitude versus frequency curve. This is for one typical eccentricity value. So that is why here I am writing as typical amplitude versus frequency curve. So for one particular eccentricity value, you can get uh, this amplitude for corresponding different frequency. So what will happen when the frequency is less? First it will go on increasing and then it will attain a peak value and after that it will go on 
reducing so corresponding to that peak amplitude whatever is the frequency that frequency is fn that is the natural frequency which we we are interested to find out to know here you see for to know this cu we need to know this f and z so that is what we are finding out by this particular response f and z is natural frequency of vibration of soil block system m is mass of the block oscillator and motor a is area of contact of block with soil so from the response of acceleration pickups you can get the acceleration that is a small az and from there you can find out the amplitude corresponding to the different frequency fz by using that particular expression as i showed you just now so once you know that Uh, what exactly is the amplitude corresponding to different frequency you can plot them for different eccentricity values so if we concentrate on any typical amplitude versus uh, frequency uh, curve then we see that first the uh, this uh, frequency it it goes on increasing and then once it attains a peak amplitude then the curve is start dooping down so that frequency corresponding to the peak amplitude is called as this natural frequency of vibration of soil block system which we want to find out so from the test we can get this f and z and then subsequently we can get that cu value the value of cu varies with the contact area of the base as you have seen that the expression of cu area was coming mass was coming so all these are the factors on which this uh, cu value will depend on hence the value of cu obtained from test needs a correction due to contact area see this cu is the property of the soil that is the spring equivalent soil spring Uh, constant so that should be independent of this contact area so to make it independent of the same some corrections are to be made what are they that is code recommends that is 4259 1992 recommends that for area larger than 10 meter square the value obtained for an area of 10 meter square may be used so if the area of the contact of that concrete block with the soil is more than 10 meter square then you have to restrict that area to 10 meter square if it is less than that you have to use that corresponding value but in case if it exceed if it exceeds 10 meter square you have to restrict the value to 10 meter square now this was all about that how you can find out the coefficient cu Uh, using vertical vibration test now let us try to see that how we can get the constant using uh, horizontal vibration test so as the name suggest horizontal vibration test and as we were discussing that when the translation motion is there along x and y axis that is along horizontal plane then we can evaluate the coefficient of elastic uniform shear which we were representing as c tau so this can be determined by a horizontal vibration test the mechanical oscillator is mounted on the block such that it generates horizontal sinusoidal vibrations in the direction of longitudinal axis of the block in previous case we saw that the uh, we saw to it that oscillator which has been mounted on the block is generating purely vertical sinusoidal oscillation however in case of this horizontal vibration test that uh, the oscillation should be horizontal sinusoidal vibration and that too in the direction of longitudinal axis of the block so we have to make sure while mounting this mechanical oscillator that it should be mounted in such a manner that it should generate only horizontal sinusoidal vibration in longitudinal axis of the uh, block in that particular direction so in this case also as it was there in case of vertical vibration test three calibrated acceleration pickups are mounted on the block one each at top 
bottom and middle along the vertical central line of the transverse face of the block so as to sense the horizontal vibration because whatever vibration has been created using this oscillator that has to be recorded so that is being done using this acceleration pickup so that its response can further be analyzed to obtain this um, constant c tau the oscillator is excited in steps starting from at rest condition so earlier it is at rest there is no excite, uh, excited state in the oscillator and then it is excited in steps it's not that that in one go it is excited in steps it has to be excited the signal from each pickup is amplified and recorded so that we can analyze this particular data further the same procedure that was used for vertical vibration test is adopted in this case also so once this is there so you fix up an eccentricity setting value and then you get the value of acceleration you find out the amplitude you then plot amplitude versus frequency curve to know this uh, um, this frequency of the system the amplitude of horizontal vibrations that is ax is obtained from small ax divided by 4 pi square f square where ax is horizontal acceleration in the direction which is under consideration because in horizontal direction it can be any in horizontal plane there can be n number of uh, this uh, um, direction so you whatever direction that in which you want to find out the spring constant in that particular direction you have to measure this acceleration where f is the frequency in cycles per second that is cps then as you did in case of vertical vibration test in this case also the amplitude frequency plot is obtained from these observation and the natural frequency of horizontal vibrations are determined exactly on the similar lines further the amplitude of vibration at the natural frequency of the system are obtained from the pickups at the three locations and plotted against height of the block so the amplitude of vibration at once you know the natural frequency you can note down the amplitude of the vibration then you 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 have mounted the pickups acceleration pickups at three locations that is top middle and the bottom so that uh, you can plot against the height of the block now the natural frequency corresponds to the first mode or the lower natural frequency if the plot corresponds to the figure given below so you see if i am plotting it with respect to height of the block this is what is the response this is the center of rotation then this is top of the block this is base of the block which where here it is in contact with the soil so if the condition is like that that this amplitude is gone increasing here in this particular case so the natural frequency will correspond to the first mode or the lower natural frequency however if the case is reverse that is like this center of rotation is here this is height of the block which we are plotting the variation with this is top of the block and you see that the variation is in this manner so in this case it is the the natural frequency corresponds to the second mode or the higher natural frequency if that particular plot corresponds to this particular type of figure so in earlier case it was the first mode so from that figure we also can make out that whatever natural frequency that we are we have obtained is corresponding to first mode or second mode or whether it is lower natural frequency or higher natural frequency then how we can find out this uh, coefficient of elastic no uniform shear of the soil it is given by this equation where it is 8 pi square gamma f nx square divided by a naught plus i naught plus square root of a naught plus i naught whole square minus 4 gamma a naught i naught where gamma is defined as mm divided by mmo what exactly are these we will see in subsequent slides however this f nx is horizontal resonant frequency of block soil system 
A naught is A by M. A is you know area of the contact uh, at the base with soil. M is the mass of a machine oscillator and that block. Then I naught is equal to 3.46 I by M M O. That is M M is mass moment of inertia of the block oscillator and motor about the horizontal axis passing through the center of gravity of block and perpendicular to the direction of vibration. Since the vibration are getting generated the oscillator has been mounted in such a way that it is generating purely horizontal sinusoidal vibration and that is why the whatever is the horizontal axis which is passing through the center of gravity of the block obviously the direction of the vibration will be perpendicular to that. Then MMO is mass moment of inertia of the block oscillator and motor about the horizontal axis passing through the center of contact area of the block and soil and perpendicular to the direction of motion. MM was the uh, mass moment of inertia about the horizontal axis passing through the center of gravity of the block. However, this is the mass moment of inertia of block about the horizontal axis which is passing through the center of contact area of the block and soil. So that you must keep in mind. Where this I is moment of inertia of the foundation contact area about the horizontal axis which is passing through the center of gravity of the area and perpendicular to the direction of vibrations. Now in this case the positive sign is used when fx fnx is the second natural frequency and negative sign when fnx is the first natural frequency. So just now we saw that using this horizontal vibration test data we can find out whether it is lower natural frequency or higher natural frequency or whether it is first mode or the second one. So once we know then correspondingly you can assign the sign. So positive sign for second natural frequency and negative sign for first natural frequency. Then the coefficient of elastic uniform shear C tau 1 for the actual base contact area of the foundation A1 is given by this particular equation that is C tau 1 is equal to C tau square root of A by A1. See A is the area of that block but it is just modeling the foundation it is not the exact size of the foundation. So for that correction we need to uh, apply so that is what it is. This is valid for small values of base area of foundation and may be used for areas up to 10 meter square. For areas larger than 10 meter square the value of C tau obtained for C uh, area to be equal to 10 meter square should be used. So as the case was there in uh, vertical vibration test exactly on the similar lines here also the area restriction of 10 meter square is there. So in case the area of the foundation base contact area is more than 10 meter square then you have to take the, that area value as 10 meter square and then go ahead with the further calculation. Then IS 5249 1992 recommends the following correlations between the elastic constants coefficient of elastic uniform compression Cu, coefficient of elastic uniform shear C tau, coefficient of elastic non-uniform compression C phi and the coefficient of elastic non-uniform shear C psi as Cu is equal to 1.5 to 2 times C tau, C phi is equal to 3.46 C tau and C psi is equal to 0.75 Cu. See many a times uh, it is not possible to conduct let us say either of the tests, maybe it is possible to conduct cyclic plate load test but that uh, um, vertical vibration test or horizontal vibration test is not possible to conduct. So what happens is that you conduct any of the tests get at least one value of this constant then empirical relations are available to correlate that. So let us say that if you have got the value of C tau 
using horizontal vibration test then in that case by applying this or using this particular expression you can obtain the expression for uh, or the value for cu once you know cu you can find out the value of c psi and c tau is known so you can get the value of c phi so uh, these are just the correlation empirical correlation based on the experience of different uh, research workers and the experience of different practitioners engineers the relationship between cu c tau c phi and c psi depends on the elastic properties of the medium that is in this case is soil the size and shape of contact area and the rigidity of foundation the values given by equations mentioned in the previous slide may be taken as average value since they are, uh, they are not being uh, obtained from some uh, mathematical means or some established mathematical method they are an empirical uh, results or empirical expressions so that is why while you use uh, these expression they just give you the representative values or the average values so today we saw that uh, how you can anal uh, analyze a uh, block foundation uh, we we saw various aspects that two theories are there that linear weightless spring theory and then the theory based on theory of elasticity then we started with that how how we can uh, go ahead with the analysis using the first method that is a spring method and in that one we saw that we need to know the soil property because we are modeling the soil using the springs so we need to precisely know that what exactly is the property of the spring and then we saw that depending on the mode of the vibration the uh, property of this spring will be changing so the question is that how we can get the property of the spring that is equivalent spring with which we are replacing the soil so after that we saw that how we can find out uh, these uh, properties there were four type of uh, basic constants or a spring constant equivalent spring constant that need to be evaluated and then we saw that how we can do using cyclic plate load test data that after that we saw uh, vertical uh, vibration test and then horizontal vibration test we saw the methodology that how one how all the four uh, this constant can be evaluated con by conducting these in situ or lab tests then we discuss about some of the empirical relations which are available because many times it may not be possible to conduct uh, all type of test let us say if we have the result of one type of test then we should be able to get the rest uh, other coefficient for uh, spring so we will be discussing this uh, aspect further in the next class with the help of few examples and then we will uh, see what exactly is the effect of damping etc on the analysis of the block foundation thank you Thank you.